What's going on guys? Bobby with Consumer Time Capsule back with another review for you here. And if you watched the Super Bowl yesterday, and I'm thinking like over a hundred million of you did, so probably pretty good chance of it. Uh, you might have seen a Jack in the Box commercial with Jack and Martha Stewart kind of having a war of words about the quality of fast food sandwiches. Uh, Jack's solution for this is the new food truck series. We're talking about prime rib cheesesteak sandwich, Asian fried chicken sandwich, and a pork belly BLT sandwich. So uh, I just decided that, uh, you know, since this stuff is brand new, why not do another head to head? Talking about all three, one after another, gonna rate them, gonna rank them, and then that way you can get the sandwich that you want and you don't have to spend $16 like I just did. <laughs> Unless you do it over three visits, in which case, you know, more power to you. Uh, since it's first on the sign, I'm gonna start with the prime rib Philly cheesesteak. Now the first thing that I'm noticing here, and if you're looking at kind of all these while they're still wrapped up, <laughs> the chicken one is gigantic compared to the pork and the uh, prime rib Philly cheesesteak. So it's, it's not a big sandwich, uh, but you got nice chunks of steak. You're not talking about like a steakum kind of steak, like a strip. What do you call that? Like, like a strip Philly cheesesteak thing. You know, you're talking about like, a, like chunks of actual like fajita beef almost uh, with some spices in it. You got, uh, you got some nice uh, melty cheese on there. You got uh, red peppers, you got green peppers, some onions. So, um, you know, overall, you know, fairly standard Philly cheesesteak. Um, like I said, a little on the small side, but that's okay, because I'm gonna eat three of these things. So uh, I don't really need a ton, a ton of sandwich in my mouth. Uh, but I'm gonna give it a shot and let you know what I think. It really is like a fajita beef. You know, when you bite into a, a beef fajita, it's got a little bit of a, it's gonna take a little extra bite. You know, if you bite into, once again, that steakum style steak, it's like nothing, it's like paper. This has got some bite behind it. It's um, a little chewy, a little chewy. The, the uh, roll, though, is really good. Tastes like a nice, fresh roll, like kind of one of those uh, you know, Walmart bakery-style rolls. Really soft, not a hard roll at all. Um, it's, uh, it's interesting. I'm going for another bite. This is kind of what it looks like inside. It's not a real thick sandwich. I'm not getting a lot of cheese in terms of the flavor profile. And that cheese is definitely all over this thing. You know what, maybe this corner didn't really get a ton of cheese. So the cheese doesn't encompass the whole bun, it doesn't encompass this part, but let me grab, grab a bite from this, from this side and then I'll let you know these, uh, let you know what I think, let's see. The cheese does kind of get lost. It adds a little bit of texture. The onions, they're all right. It's um, definitely like a regular uh, like white onion, little crunchy. The, the peppers aren't like super to my liking, honestly. The, the green pepper is um, kind of you know when you get like those wet ones, like it almost tastes like a canned green pepper, but I don't, I don't think that canned green pepper exists, so. <laughs> well, maybe not. Uh, it's all right, I'm gonna save the score for later, uh, but um, that's the, uh, the, the prime rib cheese steak. So I'm gonna kinda get into this next one. This one is the most interesting one and the uh, most heavily promoted one and definitely the largest. Definitely the largest. Look at that. I mean, that's very chickeny. Um, longer bun, but a similar style bun. 
inside, we've got, and this is, a, I, don't, I know I didn't say, it's an Asian fried chicken. When it was tested in September 2017 in San Diego, California, uh, it was called a bon me, and I guess they thought that um, America just wasn't quite ready for that verbiage <laughs> yet. Uh, but inside, you know, you got, uh, you got the Asian slaw, as they call it. And for the sauce, they call it gochujang sauce. I don't know, is anybody else, from, am, am I the only one who had never heard the phrase gochujang sauce until like 10 minutes before this video? Uh, it's apparently like an Asian chili sauce, um, but this is kind of like more of a mayo, and it's not supposed to be really as spicy as sriracha. Let's see, um, you know, maybe that's the sauce they always put on banh mi, because it always looks like kind of like a Thousand Island dressing, um, but apparently they call it gochujang. <laughs> so uh, let, me, let me take a bite of this. That's much better. I know I'm skipping ahead a little bit. The chicken is great. Look how bright that white meat chicken is. That's good quality stuff. Crispy, well seasoned. The sauce is zero heat. I mean, like, literally, if you don't like like sriracha because it's spicy or something, this might be the one for you. It's like, it's basically mayo. Um, I'm not really getting a, a, a very uh, dense <laughs> flavor out of it, but it's adding a little bit of that creamy texture, which is nice. Uh, the slaw is good. Um, you know, carrots are really popping, uh, you know, kind of lettuce, shredded lettuce. It's, it's good. It is good. I'm gonna give it another bite. I'll tell you one thing that sauce does do. It's like a chicken slip and slide in here. Like, you're not gonna get chicken in every bite because it's just pushing back and forth because of that sauce. But it's good. It is good and I think it's the same price as the others and it's definitely much bigger. So that's nice. Take one more bite and then we'll go to the, uh, the last option here. Definitely much better, but you're really just tasting mostly the chicken. But the chicken's good, so it's not that big of a problem. I'm gonna wash that down a little bit. For the third option, we have got the pork belly. BLT. Let's take a look at that pork belly here. So the best part of this is when it was test marketed uh, last September in San Diego, they actually called this thing the Super Bacon BLT, which actually makes a little bit of sense because that's kind of what it is. Um, you know, I, I know that it, those of you that are barbecue enthusiasts, you know, may be familiar with the pork belly pork belly, really good it is, really like super bacon. Um, I'm not even really all that big on bacon, but it's, 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 it's like a really fat, thick slice bacon um, and really tender. And uh, it, you know, it got kind of a little bit more notoriety last year because Arby's ended up, you know, putting that in their rotation. They had a pork belly sandwich and meat mountain sandwich with pork belly as kind of the, uh, the shining star of that. So, um, you know, other than that, it's a BLT. I'm not big on just straight mayo, um, so uh, so I decided to get it without mayo. So <laughs> I'm not I'm not factoring mayo into this evaluation uh, pro war con because it just doesn't really suit my taste. So this lettuce is green, uh, suspiciously green. <laughs> uh, tomatoes, you know, they look um, they look all right, a little soft, a little on the soft side, uh, and uh, it's got a you know what? Is that gochu? What kind of is that? Is that the go the gochujang sauce? I think it is. I don't know if that's even supposed. I don't know if that's supposed to be on here or not. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Do you see any? 
Any backups? Oh, okay. There is. Hey, look at that. You learned something new. Tangy honey aioli. That's tangy honey aioli. So they put traditional mayo and the honey aioli on it. But um, on mine, just the honey aioli. So I'm going to take a quick bite. Pork belly. Got a strong flavor for sure. Salty. <laughs> Very salty, but kind of what you would expect from bacon. It replaces the crispiness of the bacon with kind of the tenderness of jello. <laughs> it's like it has, it takes like one bite and that, that pork belly is gone. It's, um, which I kind of like. You know, it's different. It's different than any other meat that Jack in the Box is going to put on any other sandwiches. So uh, let me get another bite here. Not really a fan of the tomatoes, but you know, kind of the risk you take. So here's one thing. Side to side, the bites are totally different. Pork belly side, you're getting pretty much that saltiness of that, of that pork belly, tenderness of that pork belly. The other side, you're just getting lettuce and tomato and a little bit of aioli. And that's, and that's it. Um, so, uh, yeah, the one half of the sandwich is not very good. The other half is pretty good, so I'm going go to go back to the winning side. Mm. Hey, it's not bad. Have you never tried pork belly before? It's not a terrible first impression. You'll probably like it. Now the important part. I tried a few bites of all three. I'm gonna tell you what's best. No, you know what? Once again, Casey Kasem style. I'm gonna tell you third, second, and first. Third place, gotta be the Philly cheesesteak. Uh, the beef is tough, um, and that's really not my thing. It's not what you expect in a Philly cheesesteak. Like I said, this might be okay as like a, like a beef fajita sandwich, which is probably what I'd call it, um, but not a great cheesesteak. Um, Flavor-wise, probably talking about a, around a four out of ten. Second place, I'm going to give it to the pork belly. Uh, I'd like to give it first, but there's just so many bites that are in this thing that aren't going to include any pork belly at all because you just get those two small strips of pork belly. Um, really, though, when you get the pork belly, it's a really strong sandwich. Like, one side is like a seven and a half, and the other side is like, like a four and a half <laughs> so um so that means i guess i'll give it a six uh but solid you know definitely worth trying way different than any other options right now in fast food so very cool thing that uh that they're trying something different and the winner and i guess i probably should have expected it since this is the one on all the commercials and everything the winner is well i'd call it the bon me but it's the, uh, what do they call it? Crispy chicken something or other? Asian fried chicken. The Asian fried chicken sandwich uh, is definitely the winner. The chicken is awesome. I don't know what else they, did they do anything else with this chicken? Is there like a breakfast sandwich that they throw this on or something? Because it's not the chicken from their chicken sandwich. So that's like a Tyson patty where like everybody likes it. But I mean, let's say the meat's like, it's not, it's not the highest quality. This is way different. It's like a chicken strip, you know, like a chicken strip kind of has those like, it's like a, like a string cheese of chicken. <laughs> you know, like it just like pulls apart like that. I like the slaw, because it's got that crunchiness. Sauce is okay, not adding a ton. But I'm gonna give it seven and a half for taste. Really good. So, you know, all probably worth maybe checking out. You need a jack in the box in your area. Start with the uh, start with the Asian fried chicken because it's bigger, it's better. I think you'll like it. In terms of the gimmick, 
Jack in the Box is trying something new. I'm going to give it a bonus point for uh, bringing Martha Stewart into this equation. So, gimmick grade, about a seven. You know, hey, they're, they're trying something new. It's cool. Um, you know, not super overwhelmingly weird, but, uh, but also it's different. So, I like it. Uh, so, anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the review. Hopefully it's going to help you next time you go to Jack in the Box decipher which one of these sandwiches you want to go with. Of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're liking the reviews or if you like 80s and 90s commercials because I upload one of those every single day. Also, follow me on Twitter at ConsumerTC or Instagram at ConsumerTC. You see pictures, news, reviews, all kinds of different stuff about consumer culture. So, um, hey, thanks for watching. Sorry this one went a little bit long, but we're dealing with a lot of sandwich. That's a lot of sandwich. Um, I don't know how I'm going to polish all these off. Uh, fortunately, I brought some buddies with me. So, uh, till next time, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you back on uh, the next CTC review. Thanks.